this content is for kids. It's not uh, for kids. Uh, isn't that what I said? No, it's not for kids. If oh. you are 13 years or younger, no. this is not for you. <laughs> Do I have to kill somebody in order to actually make that point across? No, man, you don't have to kill Wait them. a second. Oh, no, 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 no. When we return to our planet, the High Court may well sentence you to torture. Greetings! You're watching Septum Sin vs. The World. I'm Septum Sin. And today, we're here for another psycho analysis! Haha! <laughs> I don't know what they have to say. It makes no difference anyway. Whatever it is, I'm against it. No matter what it is or who commenced it, I'm against it. This week, we're covering the Phil Herman masterpiece called Horror Tales 666. Six, six. Let's see if I can get it. There we go. If it's over my face, it'll focus on it. New camera. So I. I this uh, particular one is a movie that is an anthology about this burglar who breaks into this place. It's a house of a writer. He discovers a bunch of files on his computer and starts reading. Almost obsessively. So this is, ba this is in vignettes. What I love about anthology pieces is that they are essentially different movies. And because it's a whole bunch of short films put together, you're usually guaranteed at least one good one. Get used to disappointment. And I liked most of these, and that's even better. It was even better that time around, and I'm so used to these two-hour opuses here, so when I get 61 minutes at the bottom, I'm like, Oh my god, 61 minutes? Well, I gotta get behind that. <laughs> I'd buy that for a dollar. <laughs> so let's talk about these. Uh, the wraparound is pretty much the uh, burglar and him interacting with the stories. And then the last part, which I did find pretty interesting. I did like the ending. I thought this is fun. It does well. The sound pretty well performs. Uh, Joel Winecoop is the burglar, and that's always fun. Now, the acting in this wraparound, again, pretty good. And one thing in particular, I love these answering machine messages. This is Larry. I'm out of town at the moment, writing my novel. Leave a fucking message. I mean, it's just hilarious. And there's, I think there's two of them. There's one at the beginning and then one at the end. I'm not going to play the one at the end. You need to check it out for yourself. The production design on that wraparound, to me, is the highest production quality of it. The rest of it has more of a shot on video feel. Uh, this is much more a, well, a higher quality steak right there. So let's talk about the first of these. Women in Shadows. This is a story about an individual who kind of wakes up and isn't quite certain what happened. A lot of weird things going on in the background and eventually you put together what happens. I'm not going to tell you what happens. That's up to you. The writing, this one to me is the weakest one. I just feel like the writing is uh, hard to follow. It took me multiple watches to get the whole thing in my head. I'm pretty sure I have it at this point. 
If you want to know my full analysis of it, you can watch the actual psychoanalysis part later. <laughs> but uh, still, you know, out of the, out of them, I would say probably the weakest. I mean, is it at, like multiple personalities, possession, amnesia, or ghostly vengeance? These are things that uh, that go through my head every time I watch this one. So the acting in it is pretty good overall. There's some unevenness. I mean, it happens. I'm not worried about that. Unless the acting is abysmal, abysmal, I really don't hold that against anything that's a, a low budget feature, especially a shot on video type feature. And that goes into the production design. It really does come across as shot on video. I'm not sure if it was shot on video, but if it was, yeah, um, definitely in that case. And even if it wasn't, that's a pretty good mimic of shot on video, so good on that. I love it when a plan comes together. So, Luck of the Irish is the next one on there. This one's a bit easier to follow. Um, it has a bit of a thriller quality than it does a um, horror quality. I saw the ending coming uh, pretty quickly. Um, it's kind of a detective. Like I say, it's kind of a thriller, maybe even a, a noir type, if you really want to see what's going for. I feel like there were some things missing with it and again I'll talk about that a little bit later but it was overall good I kind of liked the ending even though I saw it coming I mean if they didn't do it that way it would have to be I also like the basement they used for one of the final confrontations that was really cool as far as production design acting good for that so spot number three is the dark woods or let's see the the who knows where thoughts come from they just appear mm -hmm. the next spot is the dark woods this one's about a father who ends up burying his son it looked like he had ended up killing the baby um i'm not going to talk too much about it, it has a telltale quality to it very good it doesn't really need much and does an excellent job in telling the story. Excellent acting in this one. Probably my favorite on this, though the others are pretty good. Uh, Payback is Hell is uh, about a prostitute and kind of a Jack the Ripper type case. Very short, very sweet, to the point. Fun video, I did enjoy it. If you want your sour scene and your boobs, this is where you get it. <laughs> Shut up and take my money. And then finally, Stop It, You're Killing Me is kind of this tale about this individual. He's with his friend, and his friend always gets the uh, the women, and he can't get because his friend's kind of uh, good-looking, and he's not as good-looking. So there's a bit of a uh, this-is-the-last-time vibe. Uh, I like the writing in this. I think this is my favorite one of all. The acting is very good. I liked how it was shot. It felt very well put together. Uh, I really enjoyed this one. Um, but again, overall production design is more of a shot on video quality. The movie disc itself, I didn't talk much about special features. I'm used to not having them. <laughs> and uh, I'm not really disappointed in that here. Uh, there are special features, but it's mainly just the trailers for these films. And they're fun. It's fun to watch the trailers. I do enjoy that. I think that every movie should at least have the trailers if you've got a trailer they should have them on the disc i mean that's just how it is I, I do think that's the case yeah well you know that's just like uh your opinion man all right so let's talk music the music was about on par for all of them with the wraparound with the music only being on the tail ends, both Begging to Die 
and Sex Sin Sermon by uh, Low 12 are pretty good metal pieces. If you're that kind of person, and if you're a horror fanatic, you probably like metal, at least to a point. And uh, this definitely brings that. The others have kind of more of a synth vibe, not like an eerie goblin synth, but more of a like a a very basic synth, and it works. A lot of it is minimal. I mean, payback is extremely minimal, and I would even say "Stop It, You're Killing Me" hits it the best at the end, almost a Silent Hill type vibe there. So you know, this is essentially what you get. Overall, this is not a bad package right here. I'm holding it kind of back because <laughs> I was thinking about the inappropriate looking uh, cover here. And, uh, you know, more in here. It's not a bad package overall. I'm glad I got to see it. And it's suitable for the shot on video crowd. I think it showcases a lot of good short films. Most of them are really likable. The wraparound is fun. And it's a short package. I think if you've got some time in an afternoon and you just want something quick and fun and you're a big fan of this sort of thing, this, Hortail 666, is for you. So with that being said, I hope you've enjoyed this. If you are leaving me here, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. But we're not done yet. I'm going to go, but I'm going to be back, because then we're going to start our film, Psychoanalysis. But for those of you who haven't watched this film, I would encourage you, please, check this film out. You can probably get it from the director himself, I would, uh, you know, try and find him on Facebook. That's uh, Phil Herman. Uh, you might also be able to go uh, to uh, Joel uh, D. Winecoop as also and uh, see if he has a copy as well. Um, but you might be able to search the Sleaze Box or go to www.thesleazebox.com if you want to try and get a copy of this for yourself without trying to contact anybody directly. But, if you are not averse to spoilers, or you have seen this, well hang on, because we're about to start a film, Psychoanalysis, in a minute. Let's make sure it's playing. Is it playing? It's playing. Oh, I'm back. I had to run, but I'm back. So let's do that film psychoanalysis. It starts off with kind of a film noirish scene. The burglar is sitting in a Chinese restaurant, and I love this voiceover. I think it's kind of cool here. I think it means a lot. There's a little bit of a photo scene where you get a little bit of foreshadowing for some of the future stuff, but we'll talk about that later. I'm kind of uncertain about these white subtitles. I think it does show kind of the shot on video stuff, but I look at this and I see it's a lot higher quality than the rest. So maybe you could have had something like black subtitles. You could still read it, but it was still kind of hard to, to just read it. So the guy goes in and he breaks into this house. I mean, he just goes ahead to rob it. Having all of these kind of papers laying around with the big bold letters, it just says, yeah. Uh, I think... That uh, I think with this in mind, his assessment of the guy is accurate. Sounds like an asshole. So I think it's pretty creative using the Word document as we go in uh, to show off the story and the name of the titles. It keeps with the low budget feature. You don't have to really create a fancy title, but at the same time, it fits in with the story and the wraparound. I do like that. <clears throat> now, at the same time, they flash by quickly. I had to pause. So, 
maybe uh, holding a few seconds. <laughs> so here we are with our first one where we see this guy in bed and this woman comes, she unbuttons her top and uh, in a way it feels almost like a possession. And you see this like thing in the window where she kind of gives this come hither uh, vibe. <laughs> Which, again, seeds confusion. We even have this call where this woman kind of gives him like this, hey, uh, we were going to meet up. It's like, I told you not to call here. You know, again, confusion. I'm not sure what's kind of going on here. Like, did the guy forget what he did? Was someone, was something else in charge of him at the time? He's going over here with this, like, pill cabinet. Is, is it, like, the pills? Are they messing with him? Okay. He goes, he fixes himself some food. Yeah, onion soup. And, and put it in a cold pan. No. No, heat that stuff up first. Then put it in. It dissolves faster that way. Anyone? Anyone know the effects? Now, I do like the appliance cutting on. It kind of gives the haunting angle, especially if it's a uh, ghost coming in. And I also kind of wonder, because he wakes up a little bit later, like he slept. I mean, this dude just put the soup on the stove and he's going to take a nap. I mean, is he in, is he actually dead? I mean, is he dead because he died in a fire because he caught his kitchen on fire i mean tell me that's the reason maybe he's dead that 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 would make sense and if you do drugs you go to hell before you die please ah uh, this next scene kind of confused me because if he knows what he did why is this kind of a reminder this this tub thing and they do focus on the bathtub a lot because the bathtub is kind of the side of this murder that happened and uh, that's you know there um let me play this point try to remember al try to remember now this is another thing kind of confused me is her accent like british australian she's got an accent going i just don't know what it is these are the kind of thoughts that kept me out of the really good schools But she's obviously this, the one that's kind of behind him doing this. At least I think she is. And um, it comes together essentially saying that, you know, the wife was killed for the insurance. He was going to make it look like a burglary. But then I'm guessing that the burglar killed him or maybe he killed him a little later. And it looks like the burglar is wine coop. Maybe it's the same burglar that's in the wraparound it's all kind of unclear i would like to know more about this this is intriguing i feel like if this had been stretched out a little bit longer maybe some of the answers would have come to me but i think that's that's what i got but uh back to the wraparound again i so the uh this person who is trying to get uh the writer's works she calls, and I think it's her, his producer or whatever, and she calls, I love this answering machine. So, the location that this person, manager, I guess it is, uh, lives at, it's great. This is a porno-esque home, if I ever saw it. It's got this carpet, it's got a roaring fire, it's just, it's perfect, man. And some of the pictures that you see, it's just there but she's calling asking him for his stuff and we're gonna see more of that as we go now our second one which i believe is uh luck of the irish we just finished woman of shadows this kind of reporter walks right onto the crime scene uh, of this private apartment i mean what are y'all doing letting him go? Arrest his ass. There's got to be something illegal about that. I mean, press maybe out in the open, but you're walking into an apartment. To... Uh, hmm. 
so the scene itself, I mean, you've got a lot of interesting music going on in the background. Uh, you see, and you see this killer kind of watching as the scene unfolds. I'm assuming it's the killer. He's got a lot of videotapes. I'm wondering if he's one of those people who kind of places a hidden camera at all the scenes to record what's going on. There's a lot of cool setup here for this killer. I kind of like it. I like how they do it. Now, I don't get how he finds out about the second one because he's trying to help solve this murder. He just kind of shows up there and the police are there and there's no indication that there was a murder. He just kind of like is there. And I don't quite understand how he figures that one out. They don't show much. And I would agree with the police if, because they kind of get suspicious of him. And I would too. I mean, how else are you going to know about this stuff? I mean, you don't show much in the way of research. I'm guessing this guy has some sort of relationship with the killer. Maybe that's it. Or maybe he's a psychic. I don't have facts to back this up. Uh, but, um, at least on the next one, it, it sees him going back and doing a little bit more research. I feel like there's some unanswered questions, maybe some evidence that was dropped that he picked up, something that, that, we, that he knows that we don't as the audience. Or maybe at the end of the day, we just need to say, well, he's just that good. At the end of it all, he's just that good. He's got the beta king. So he gets this other one. He finds that that somebody has died. He goes down to the basement and he ends up running into the killer. I really love the grainy quality of the video in this scene. Sometimes grain, I know some people really don't like it, but for something like this, graininess really works to give the feel that you're looking for in the film. And that does a great thing. Um, I feel like this dude uh, should have been more prepared, seeing as he's a super detective for this guy, but uh, he does have a pretty cool fight thing and uses a legit self-defense technique, kind of slowed down a little bit, but I, can, I, I know this, I mean, I've had self-defense, I've seen how it works, so there's a cool reality to that, a nice little tweak, and he kind of kind of sort of knocks him down and outish at least enough for him to go back get his camera and leave and that's it you know i feel like that was a big risk but i guess it paid off because he delivers this camera and they're able to identify the killer now i don't understand this um why isn't he hiding out if he's such a big detective, why wouldn't he be able to connect the dots? Uh, this dude's going to come after you. <laughs> Which he does. <laughs> I mean, really. <sighs> but in the end, dude, you don't have to do a lot of research to know that the next target is you, you big dummy. <laughs>
and one can really understand how this can push at you. Most newborns, if you have a newborn, you're not sleeping. You're not sleeping. And if you don't have a partner or somebody really steadfast to help you, you're going to not sleep at all and you're going to be pushed mentally. You've got to be on top or you could break. And in this case, yeah. The crying is what got to me. I picked her up and began to shake her and shake her. And after a few times, she stopped crying. Shaking, uh, shaking baby, shaken baby syndrome is actually very common, unfortunately. And I think that's part of what happens here. So we're looking here, he, he kind of just covers the child with leaves. <laughs> and uh, I guess he plans on feeding the wildlife. Uh, maybe, maybe in the end he really wants to get caught because you see him sit there on a stump, put a gun in his mouth with the intent of ending things. But he doesn't have the heart to do it. And that's when he starts hearing the baby cry. And this is kind of a telltale heart type thing. That guilt is just getting to him. He opens the bag and he starts running from this kind of ghost thing that we can't see. And you wonder if there's a lot of internal illusion going on that the guilt has driven him to where he's seeing some sort of baby demon running after him. And it's great. You don't have to do a lot of special effects with it because, again, this is in his head. And you can show him, show us that it's in his head. I kind of like that. And then he comes upon his own body. And it looks like he did blow his brains out. And I'm guessing that the spirit was just reflecting on what it did before he gets dragged down to, well, you know where. <laughs> and if you do drugs, you go to hell before you die. Please. So, with the wraparound, they kind of lost the voiceover. It's kind of weird. They're inconsistent with it. I would have loved if they just kept the voiceover, full the wraparound the full time. I think it does really well. Um, and now we uh, go to our next one, which is the uh, Luck of the Irish. No, wait, no, Luck of the Irish is the other one. Payback is Hell. But well, we're talking more of a Jack the Ripper type character. You've got this woman kind of putting on this, uh, well, she's having a nice topless shower scene. And uh, I don't know. All these scenes are kind of awkward. And I guess I understand. I mean, it's kind of awkward doing a nude scene, I'm sure. But no one showers like this. I mean, who showers like this? Really? Ah. Uh, one of these days, I just want them to get in the shower and like, okay, take a shower like you normally would. We'll film the thing. We'll just use part of it for our scene. I just, maybe they didn't want to wet the hair because sometimes it's hard to dry the hair. But, uh, I mean, you find out she's pretty much a prostitute. They sent this kind of really tight nurse outfit. And it looks like it's going to pop open, but you find out later those buttons are much stronger than you would think. And also, I gotta wonder, like, she puts on this thing and it's tight and it's gonna pop open, supposedly, but why is she wait until after that's on to put on her underwear? Why not put on her underwear first and then put on the nurse's outfit? Maybe I just don't know. <laughs> oh, yes, of course. Sometimes I lose my train of thought. One time, I missed a train because I was looking at a girl. So she goes to this guy's house, and you see this guy sitting there, and I just think to myself, oh, no, 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 this dude's creepy. Don't trust him. But she's a prostitute. Uh, so I guess she deals with a lot of creepy guys. So it's difficult there. And she kind of undresses for him. But, of course, it turns out that he's actually a killer and not the one who hired her. And she ends up getting choked to death. I love this. I like the suspenseful music as they're killing her. And, for goodness sakes, <laughs> I love the abruptness of it. It just goes from zero to 60 in just a moment. Just like that. And then, boom. 
that makes this probably one of my favorites. You know, the last one, which is, that's the buzzer, it's telling my time is running out, which is Stop It, You're Killing Me. It's a pretty cool one right there. Uh, you've got this kind of guy giving this voiceover. It kind of gives a, a little bit of an, I guess they call it incel uh, vibes. It's an off-colored remark. It was highly inappropriate. You want? I'll demand his text. Where he's really blaming his friend for his own insecurities. I mean, he's not that much worse looking than his friend in many cases. But I do think because his friend is more assertive, he takes advantage of it. And you can see that as he walks off with the women at the bar. <clears throat> and... He tells him, you know, hey, uh, we got to help get you a woman. And I guess they, they like to go outside and drink in the bushes <laughs> when they're saying this. Uh, but uh, he goes on a trip and his friend meets this other woman and they're dating via voiceover. And I wonder, instead of going to black and just giving that voiceover, like maybe rent out a place... Uh, like, um, like maybe a bookstore, I think is where it takes place. I mean, you could do like some ba basic scenes or maybe guerrilla filmmaking, you know, just like go and like see some stacks and just do a quick scene in the back of the library or something. Um, and just get to the point. You kind of hear this stuff and. You feel like his friend's a bit of a douche. Especially when they're talking about the birthday and he can't be there. But you can feel like he's implying he's being set up. So he sees Brad's in the house when he goes over. Because he's going to work. He decides to take off work early. He comes over. And he sees his friend Brad in the house. And he feels like this is his woman. And he took his woman. So he goes, he kills Brad off. He goes in the house, he kills the girl off, and then he goes back home pretty happy for himself. Like, I stood up for myself. I took that bad boy out. I took out that cheating woman. And then here's that, uh, there's just a, they're planning a party. It's his sister, and they were kind of planning on setting him up there the whole time. I feel like the acting in this is really good. Um, other than the kind of the blank screen voiceover, I think this is one of my favorites. I really do like uh, this guy. He, he does an excellent job. They all do a pretty good job. And just that kind of glee or madness, that brokenness when it's all over, it just, it just comes together. So we come back to the wraparound. He reads the last story, but it's him. And he's, he's reading it. He's realized it talks about this burglar breaking into this guy's house. And then he turns around and sees the killer. And of course, the author has been there all along. Now killing the burglar. And then we get to see this other call with the answering machine. There you go. This is Larry. I can't come to the phone right now. I'm killing some asshole who's robbing me. Leave a fucking message. And of course, the uh, credits end with your metal, like, you know, a good shot on video should have metal endings. And that's your wrap. So Horror Tales is kind of a mixed bag, but what anthology isn't a mixed bag? You've got various sources bringing in things. These are different pieces of material. Even when you've got writers and actors that are the same, in some cases, it's still different productions. And you're squeezing them together to fit into this. And with this thing, you've got some pretty good stories, good ideas. I didn't dislike any of the ideas though a couple might have fallen on execution i still feel like as the package this one favorably rings well 
So this has been Septum Sen. If you like this, of course, hit that like button, subscribe, and share. But go grab yourself Hardtail666 at thesleevesbox.com. You won't be disappointed. But we'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.